it was it was a strange job at the beginning because the reaction from the media didn't really help me. Uh, I mean, it was because nobody had researched John Adshead. They didn't know who you were. I mean, I'd worked in Perth uh, for the previous uh, six years. Uh, I'd been a state coach. I'd been to probably uh, in that time at least 10 international tournaments in Asia. I'd probably coached something like 60 or 70 international games at that level. Although it was West Australia, it wasn't Australia. But they used to call us Australia in those days. And we were the only state that used to travel to Asia to play. So I was probably still wet behind the ears a little bit, but I'd, I'd really been exposed to you know countries like South Korea who were very strong at that time and Malaysia. So I had a good background there. And I remember a journalist saying, but how do you think you're going to react to taking a national team? And I said, I, I don't understand the question. He said, well, you're not running out with a Northern League team on a Saturday afternoon. You're going to take our national team against other international sides. And I said, well, I don't think it'll be any different than the other 60 or 70 times that I've previously done it. But he didn't know. So I thought, they don't even know who you are. You're a little coach that's come to New Zealand, coached Manurewa for three years. I came in the January with, with a job offer out there to go to Dallas to coach in, in the US League at that time. So I was always here for a very, very short period of time. Um, but what I found in New Zealand uh, was a football club uh, with, with talent and, and something I found that you didn't want another coach to get a hold of. But I found a country. Uh, I found, I remember when we played Rotorua. Uh, away, and we we used to always the first to take Northern League players. We used to go the night before to Wangarei or to Rotorua when we when we played away games, and the players liked that and responded, you know, very well to it. But I remember them taking me to my room and saying, and they closed the curtains and they held my eyes, and I wasn't allowed to look until I was told. And all they wanted to show me was the bubbling mud uh, and everything. And when that curtain opened, I was just gobsmacked. Um, the hotel. 10 yards away, there it was all happening. Um, and as I travel this country and, and get to know it, I, I honestly don't think. Um, there is other places like it in the world, but not all in one country. And, and I think that's what New Zealand is. From the far north, I've coached in, in Invercargill, brushing the snow off the lines one week uh, when I was working in the, in the coaching thing for the FA. And I've been in Kaitaia the following week in a pair of shorts and no top. I mean, it's fantastic. It's it, we are, and until you've travelled the world, you don't know how blessed you are. New Zealand was great in 1980. Uh, I worry about it a little bit now, uh, which I didn't then. But it's a fantastic country, and it's somewhere I didn't want to leave in the end. I had a lot of respect for Charlie Dempsey, um, and I'd always give him 10 out of 10. I think he was one of the best politicians in football that you'll ever see. I think he, he knew his business in football. He knew how to get things done from higher bodies like FIFA. Uh, and I had a tremendous amount of respect for him. But we, we used to come head to head, usually over players. I liken it to a husband and a wife who never argue, unless we're arguing about the children. And it, it was very, very similar to that. If I felt he was hurting, or not giving the best that the FA could possibly give to players in either preparation, wages or whatever, we would come head to head. And uh, it was, that made our relationship um, very rocky. But, you know, I always say, you don't have to like all the time, but to work together, you do have to respect. And Charlie Dempsey and I, I honestly believe, I mean, God bless him, he's not here now. Uh, but I always think there was a respect there uh, between the two of us and that kept our relationship on track uh, to do whatever we did. The headlines hit the roof every now and again but that's the way the game was. When you coach football, um, I've, if, if there's a, you lean one way or the other um, and I've always been a, a coach that likes players to score goals. I like players to enjoy the environment that I build as a coach to play in. I, I, I don't want them to think, well, we've got training tomorrow. I want them to really think, fantastic, we're training tomorrow. And, and I like, I build an environment for enjoyment and I build an, enjo uh, an environment where we score goals. I'm much more happier losing 5-4 than I am losing 1-0. When I used to walk into Mount Smart Stadium, get off the bus and, uh, and then 
players would go out and have a look at the ground and things and they'd come and talk to me about studs and things and as they were then getting changed I used to just walk out on my own and just go and have a look and absorb it all and things like that and that crowd did excite me you know you think they're here to watch my product and that was my motivation um, that I had to do it because I want them to go home happy and if my lot do what they're asked to do and do it well that means we're going to win football matches and this lot are going to go home and want to come back again and that's how I used to feel it was the crowd I used to love that feeling of a crowd watching what you've prepared